Hello there, friends and followers, and welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator Sim Update 9. I have heard mixed reviews on Sim Update 9. It is without a doubt an update that focuses mainly on fixes and the flight model of select aircraft in the sim, including this Cessna 172 G1000. My personal experience with Sim Update 9 has been mixed as well, just like the reviews that it has received from the community. While it has definitely introduced a lot of stability into the sim, it has broken some of the add-ons as well as introduced a little bit of degradation in performance. In this video, I will be showing you all the changes I have made to the NVIDIA control panel settings as well as the in-sim settings to obtain a smooth experience in Microsoft Flight Simulator Sim Update 9. Before we begin taking a look at the settings, here are a few tips that may prove helpful to improve your overall experience in the sim. Please do note that not all the tips and settings introduced in this video may be helpful for you, but I sure do hope that some will provide you with better experience in the sim and help you gain better performance. The first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that game mode is turned off. To do this, we're going to search for the word game in the Windows search bar and click on game mode setting. Make sure that the game mode is turned off. The next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the graphic acceleration is turned off. To do this, we're going to search for graphic settings. From the graphic setting menu, ensure that hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is off. Variable refresh rate is also off. Please refer to my previous video on the MSFS settings guide for the graphics performance preference. From this menu, we will select desktop apps and then select Microsoft Flight Simulator and make sure that you select high performance. It is worthwhile mentioning that a previous tweak in my previous MSFS settings video is now obsolete. The tweak had to do with disabling full screen optimizations. This tweak is now obsolete since Sim Update 9. I have experimented many times with this option on and off, and I have found that when it's turned on, while the performance stays the same in terms of FPS, more stutters were introduced in the Sim. The other one had to do with change high DPI scale or scaling override. Also, this used to be ticked on and applications selected in my previous settings guide. This is again uh, is obsolete uh, since Sim Update 9. There is no change whatsoever in performance uh, with this option on or off. My recommendation is to keep it off. In order to get the best performance, it is best that you baseline your performance based on a scenery that is very complex and an aircraft that is very demanding. My recommendation is to place the Boeing 747 at London Heathrow Airport and begin tweaking your settings there. I have already done that and we will experiment with that at the end of the video. As you can see, we are getting about 73 frames. The processor um, utilization is under 30% at all times. We are clocking at about 5.1 megahertz and we can also see that the uh, Utilization of the RTX 3090 is now in the 80s range. Uh, this is a significant uh, improvement from Sim Update 8, where the utilization was always at 100% or 99%. So definitely um, optimization there in terms of GPU usage. Uh, we can see all the temps are uh, normal. Uh, we can see that the uh, CPU temperature is not exceeding 60 Celsius and the GPU temperature is steady at 74 Celsius, which is pretty good. Let us now take a look at the NVIDIA control panel, and I do not recommend that you make any changes other than the ones I show you now on the NVIDIA control panel. Before you begin making changes to the NVIDIA control panel, make sure that you are at the global settings and that you restore everything to factory default. Then proceed to the program settings, select Microsoft Flight Simulator, and here are the changes that you need to make. First, make sure power management is set to prefer maximum performance. Texture filtering quality is set to high performance. 
the threaded optimization is turned off and the vertical sync is turned off as well. Now, one thing that you might want to experiment with is the maximum frame rate. Now, if you're not a streamer, I highly recommend that you lock your frames at 36 frames. That will allow the sim to go up to 35 frames during flight, which is extremely good if you have um, high latency. Uh, the frame rate, uh, limiting the frame rates will mean that you will, your GPU will not basically work the extra for frames that you don't need. In order to have a smooth experience, you need somewhere between 30, 33 to 35 steady frames. If you don't go below 33 frames, I assure you that your experience will be very smooth. You're going to need a little more FPS if you're a streamer and you have other um, applications working in the background, such as Streamlabs, OBS, and the recording software or your streaming software then in this case, I do not recommend that you lock your frames. If you are, however, recording a video and you are using um, NVIDIA Share or um, NVIDIA Shadow Play, um, it is perfectly okay to lock your frames at 35 FPS. Just make sure that when you're recording, you are recording at 30 FPS, uh, 30 FPS and not 60 FPS. In all cases, do experiment with locking this at 36 frames. I have gained very, very smooth experience, but because I'm a streamer and I stream, I had to turn this off in order to get the maximum frames as the streaming software will compete with Microsoft Flight Simulator for CPU and GPU. So these are all the settings that you need to make at the, um, at the NVIDIA control panel. Let us now take a look at the in-game settings. And I have spent considerable amount of time in order to understand what really affects performance the most. So the sliders or the settings that will really give you the most FPS when you tone them down. And the biggest one is this one, the terrain level of detail. Now this slider can go up to 400. At 400, uh, the machine is probably going to be taken to its knees. And let me actually show you this. I'm going to go and boost this all the way to 400. We're going to apply the settings and we're going to go and resume the sim. Now we're going to bring up our uh, control here. And as you can see now, we are clocking about 55, 60 FPS or so uh, at this setting. And you can see it's fluctuating, but it doesn't go above 60 FPS. Now we are going to go back and change this to 175, which is the setting I have had um, earlier. And we're going to say apply and save. And we're going to go back to the sim and resume. And now you can see that we're going up to 73 FPS, 71 FPS. So considerable amount of frames uh, when really changing the uh, ter terrain level of detail. So that's one of the big things that affect performance. Now, here is the thing with the terrain level of detail. Let me move this out of the way. Um, so with the terrain level of detail, um, you, it really depends on your machine. Originally, when Microsoft Flight Simulator released, this setting, uh, the max for the terrain level detail was 100. And at 150, you're actually, it's actually still a very good bargain between performance and visual quality. So if you're having an issue, and of course I do have a 3090 graphics card, so um, I know that not many of you have a card um, as, as powerful as the 3090. So my recommendation is with everything else that you've got, any settings that you have today, begin with this slider, leave everything alone and just begin with this slider. If it's, for example, set at 200 and you go to 150, I assure you that you will gain significant amount of frames without really losing much individual quality. Another thing that is going to um, improve performance about you're going to get somewhere between five to seven frames extra when you reduce the texture super sampling from eight to four 
Um, again, as, as you've seen in the video, no degradation in, in the visual quality, uh, but we have gained about seven more FPS uh, with this option set to four by four. Another two big items that really affect performance is the shadow maps and the terrain shadows. And those, my recommendation is to lower those down a little bit. So I've taken those a notch down from the maximum settings. Each one of them has gone a notch down and I have gained anywhere between five, three to five FPS uh, on average, depending on the scene, the time of day, of course, and how much shadows exist in the scene. So these are the two, again, uh, begin with the uh, terrain level of detail. So get that and you're, if you're still needing a little more frames, then you can definitely come to texture super sampling, reduce that. If you still feel that you need additional FPS, then go ahead and lower the shadow maps and the terrain shadows. And then the um, uh, uh, cog map reflections, uh, take this to 128 no matter what you do in those settings, because this seems to have also a huge effect on FPS. So um, take it two notches down. I think the maximum is 256. So take this to 128 and you will definitely obtain um, additional maybe three to five FPS. Then um, the interesting thing that I found is, uh, of course, I, I don't use Bloom. Uh, it's just a matter of personal preference. I don't like it, so it's turned off. But the depth of field is another item that will cost you about three to five FPS. So um, again, when, when I looked at the visual quality as seen with and without the depth of field, I didn't really see that big of a difference. And so I think it's a good trade-off uh, between visual quality and performance, you will get a lot more performance for very little degradation in visual quality. Uh, so I definitely recommend that you turn this off. Motion uh, blur, I recommend that you turn off. Lens correction and lens flare, I turn those off as a matter of personal preference. And then the glass cockpit refresh rate, uh, ensure that this is on low, and this will give you the best performance uh, I have seen so far based on all the tests that I've done. No matter what your um, PC um, specs are, those are the settings that you will gain the most performance from when you tone down. And this comes after a significant amount of research and testing. All right, here's what we're gonna do now. We are going to load the Boeing 747 at London Heathrow and take a look at the performance. We are at the runway ready for takeoff and you can see that the FPS is now really suffering. We're getting about between 25, 26 FPS or so. And at this rate, uh, things will be a bit jittery. As you can see here, as we pan around, there's a little bit of jitter uh, and this is expected because this FPS is considered very low. And the scenery that we have loaded is uh, that of INI Scenery by INI Builds. And link to the scenery will be provided in the description section of the video. Um, I highly recommend, even if you do not have this scenery, make this your baseline. Bring the Boeing 747 at London Heathrow, put it on the runway, and uh, monitor your FPS and make all your tweaks there. What we're going to do is we're going to release the brakes and we're gonna take off and we're gonna monitor what happens to the performance. Now, the minute we take off, of course, the performance will increase uh, because we don't have as much scenery uh, around the aircraft and our GPU and CPU uh, do not have to work very hard to render the scene. So let's go ahead and give it full power and let's go. Let's release the parking brake. Uh, you can see that as we roll down the runway, it's not that bad. Uh, so you don't get as much jitters uh, as long as you don't move the camera. So once you start panning the camera, then the jitters become really, really bad. Uh, but as such, um, moving just in a straight uh, fashion here down the runway, uh, you can see it on the side without a doubt. Uh, we're coming up here to, let's go ahead and take off. Uh, we can definitely see it as we take off that the frames are really suffering. You can look at it now going down to the 16 range and then it will start improving as we uh, depart the London Heathrow area. You can see now that the FPS is going 
uh, reaching 30s and 31s, and it will continue to um, increase uh, until it stabilizes uh, in a little while. Uh, here is uh, a look at the external uh, view of the uh, Boeing 747, and uh, you can see the FPS is improving as we um, climb uh, away from uh, London Heathrow, and we can retract our flaps now. Definitely much better FPS now as we depart London Heathrow. The scene is pretty smooth. And if you are getting this kind of FPS with the Boeing 747, you will definitely get decent FPS with the other aircraft. Uh, so it will be either as bad as the 747. So either you're going to get something in the 28, uh, you know, 25 to 28 FPS, or you're going to get something better uh, with the uh, other aircraft. As you can see now, we can see the FPS is definitely improving. Now we're getting in the 38 range uh, as we move away from the airport area and uh, climbing to about uh, 10,000 feet. You can see the FPS is now normalized again, getting 41, 36, 40 FPS, which is, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, and we've also picked a cloudy day here uh, to do this test. And as you can see, everything is looking pretty sharp and pretty good. Uh, performance is pretty solid at this point. And we can see also the utilization of both CPU and GPU is normal. The temperatures are pretty good, both on CPU and GPU. And it's uh, really a nice experience now. Well, folks, this is pretty much what I wanted to share with you. I hope that the tips uh, that I provided for you in this video prove helpful and if you have any questions, please do post them in the comment section below. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for tuning in, and bye-bye for now.